Greetings of grace and welcome to worship at Yorkville Congregational United Church of Christ, where it is a great pleasure to be worshiping with you this morning. It is so glad, we are so glad that you are worshiping with us. And uh, please worship as the Spirit inspires you. Sing and dance and laugh and play and pray and cry and know that we are together in God's good graces. Would you rise as you are able for the call to worship? Be open to God's presence in your life. Be open to God's presence in the church. Be open to God's presence in the world. Please join me in our prayer of unison. Gracious God, make each of us an instrument of your grace. Weave us into a community showing forth your power and tenderness. Bless us in our differences and strengthen our courage to stand together. We call on you today to gather us in your love. Lead us to better know you and glorify you on each step in life's journey. In the name of Jesus, help us open our lives to breathe in the life of God. Amen. Our opening hymn is, O oh, for a Thousand Tongues to Sing. So today is a special day. We will have uh, a baptism, woohoo! And uh, yes, we're gonna sing that song that makes people cry. And, uh, and we will also be celebrating communion today. So if you uh, have not picked up a cup in the back there, please uh, grab one of those and so that you might celebrate communion with us. That is part of our safety protocols here. And if you are gathered with us at home, please take time now to, uh, to assemble your communion for this day and for that celebration. All kinds of things have happened and are going to happen in our wonderful church. Thank you and kudos to Kathy and Jeff Barron and Jerry Ryerson for the wonderful work you did with the Touch a Truck yesterday. That was great. And thanks to everyone who participated in Doug's funeral and uh, made it such a grand and wonderful success. Uh, it was outside, for those of you who don't know, and we had tents and it was a, a really wonderful, wonderful occasion and we are grateful for that. Uh, next Sunday, following worship, there's a meeting of parents of confirmation students, so please join us for that. Um, next Sunday is registration day for uh, Sunday school, so please register your kiddos if you still need to. We would like those participating as well. Uh, Tuesday at 7 p.m., the book club meets. Uh, contact Amy List if you have more need of more details. And then uh, the missions and ministry uh, the missions ministry begins a collection for Kendall County Food Pantry. This church was instrumental in uh, starting the Kendall County Community Food Pantry. And uh, this, this collection, all kinds of uh, goods to be collected 
for the food pantry. It continues through September 19th. If you uh, haven't had a chance to look at the happenings, uh, there are more details in that publication as well. So thank you to everybody who's, uh, who's participating and continuing in that. Now, today is a very, very special day um, because we will be celebrating a baptism today. And, and I want to share with you a couple of the pieces of magic that come with this particular baptism. This bowl was given to us by Art Zilgit. Arthur Zilgit was a pastor of this congregation when the congregation moved from what's now the chapel on the green to this building. And they were going to do a, the very first baptism and they scrambled around to try and figure out, well, how are we going to do that? They didn't have the font. So Art grabbed this beautiful cut glass bowl from his house and brought it to baptize the very first child. And now they've donated it to the church. So we use that. And magically, it fits perfectly in the hole that was made for it. It's just wonderful. But here's the other piece of this that's extra special. That very first baptism happened on January 28th in 1990, and that baptized child was Zachary David Seibel, who's with us here today. Zach, if you'd stand up. This is, this is the baby that was baptized that day. <laughs> All right, so part of the baptism process is that we invite the children of the church to come on forward. So if you are a small fry, if you'd like to come forward, come now. Come on, come on, come on. Somebody's got to start if you're the first. Come on. You guys can be the first ones. This will give you a front row seat for the baptism. So come on. If you'd like to sit down here, and I have something extra magical to show you today. If those kids would like to join us, they're welcome too as well. We have, yes, you are a kid, Chris. That's right. All right, now, as I've, as I've taught you before, we use water for baptism, right? You guys can look this way if you want to. Okay, you, you, the interesting stuff will be back here. This, this is water from the local place. But then here, here we have some special water that the babies, that Lillian's grandmother is, is bringing to us today. And great-grandmother, great-grandmother is bringing us today. And this was from the Seibel's uh, trip to Israel. And in this container is water from the Jordan River, which is where Jesus was baptized. Jesus was, you know, like we have the Fox River here in our area. Jesus was baptized in the River Jordan. So we're going to take some of this Jordan River water and put it in here. And now we have Jordan River water along with local, baptize, uh, local water. And we're going to mix it around. See? And there's water from the Jordan in there. Can you see that? And there's water from our local place. And we're going to pray over this water and bless this water so that it becomes sacramental water. You, you can touch it if you want. It becomes sacramental water. Yeah. Do you want to touch it? Go ahead. There you go. And this water is what we use for baptism. You, you want to touch it? I'm with you. Uh, maybe not. You? No? Okay. We're good. <laughs> All right. So today is a very, very special day because we celebrate this baptism and we light this candle with the flame of God that it will be sharing in today's baptism as well. We invite to come forward those for whom this baptism has been prepared. And if you'll just stand here. Right, right there. Good, perfect. All right. Members and friends in Christ, we gather now to celebrate the gift of grace in the sacrament of baptism. There is one body and one spirit. There is one hope in God's call to us. The sacrament of baptism is an outward and visible sign of the grace of God, inasmuch as the promise of the gospel is not only to us, but also to our children. Baptism with water and the Holy Spirit is the mark of their acceptance into the care of Christ's church. The sign and seal 
of their participation in God's forgiveness and the beginning of their growth into the full Christian faith and discipleship. This is the water of baptism. Come, Holy Spirit, come, bless this water. Fill it with the effervescence of life. Fill it with the power of your spirit that all who are bathed in it this day may know your grace throughout their lives. Come, Holy Spirit, come. To the parents of this child, do you desire to have your child baptized into the faith and family of Jesus Christ? If so, please say, we do to the parents and sponsors of this child. Will you encourage this child to renounce the powers of evil and to receive the freedom of new life in Christ? If so, please say, we will with the help of God. Will you teach this child that they may be led to profess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? If so, please say, we will with the help of God. Do you promise by the grace of God to be Christ's disciples, to follow in the way of our Savior, to resist oppression and evil, to show love and justice, and to witness to the work and word of Jesus Christ as best as you are able. If so, please say, we do with the help of God. Do you promise, according to the grace given you, to grow with this child in the Christian faith, to help this child be a faithful member of the Church of Jesus Christ by celebrating Christ's presence, by furthering Christ's mission in all the world, and by offering the nurture of the Christian Church so they may affirm their baptism if so, please say, we do with the help of God. Would you rise as you are able in the congregation? You guys can stay. It's good. Jesus calls us to make disciples of all nations and to offer them the gift of grace in baptism. Do you who witness and celebrate this sacrament promise your love, support, and care to all baptized as they live and grow in Christ? Thank you. You may be seated. My turn. I agree. Okay. By what name shall this child be called? Name Grace Babel. By the name Grace, I baptize you in the name of the Creator and the Christ and the Holy Spirit. May God bless and enrich your life each and all the days as you live and beyond. Thanks be to God. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, your sister Lillian Grace, <laughs> thanks be to God. Will you join me in singing?
As we enter a time of prayer, if you are joining us from home, please take this time for silent prayer. God of the gentle breeze that refreshes and God of the quiet rain that renews. We come to you this day with hearts full of gratitude for friends, for family, and for your constant presence in our lives. Abiding God, we are linked to your love and bound to your spirit. Assuring God, We seek your steadiness this day. Help us to abide with you. Teach us, O God, how to respond to a world weary of war, shattered by hurricanes and full of ailments beyond our knowing. Hold us firmly as we work in the strength of your grace. God of healing and God of hope, You know our every care, so we trust to your gracious providence. Wendy and Doug and Esther and the two Mary Ellens, all affected by the hurricane, all affected by COVID-19. Abide with us as a comfort in our discomfort, a hope in our healing, and a celebrant in our joy. We pray for the search committee that they may have unity, spiritual strength, wisdom, fortitude, and fun. Guide them, calling God. O Lord, our governor, whose glory is in all the world, we commend this nation to your merciful care, that we may dwell secure in your peace. Grant to the President of the United States, the governor of this state, and to all in authority, wisdom and strength to know and to do your will. Bolster our love, O God, that we may love the loveless, embrace the broken, and fill the world with grace. And hear us, O God, as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Shall we sing? Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. The reading today is from the book of Mark, chapter 7, verses 24 through 37. From there, he set out and went away to the region of Tyre. 
He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there, yet he could not escape notice. A woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him, and she came and bowed down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile of Syrophoenician origin. She begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he said to her, for saying that, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. She went home, found the child lying on the bed, and the demon was gone. Then he returned to the region of Tyre and went by way of Sidon towards the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. They brought to him a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech, and they begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him aside in private, away from the crowd, and put his fingers into his ears, and he spat and touched his tongue. Then looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Ephapha, that is, be opened. And immediately his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. Then Jesus ordered them to tell no one. But the more he ordered them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. They were astounded beyond measure, saying, He has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. We recently had a guest from Florida who goes to a church where there are no children. And he wrote me a note and said, I was so glad to hear the noises of children in church because it means the church is full of life. And he confessed to missing those noises in his church. So we celebrate the noises of children in this church and we are grateful that they are here sharing their voices among ours. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? May the words of my mouth fertilize your planted seeds, O oh God. Amen. I love this text, and I love it every three years when it comes around because it is such a delightfully lively and full text. And I usually use the front half of it, the first half of it, where the Syrophoenician woman pleads with Jesus, begs Jesus to please heal her daughter, and then Jesus compares the woman to a dog. And I don't know what happened the last time you compared a woman to a dog, but it usually doesn't go well. And then did you notice Jesus relents? He changes. He shifts. And he heals the child. And the whole point of that text, well, the whole point of this whole text is that the grace of God, as, 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 as it comes to us through Jesus Christ, is open to the Gentiles. Not just held for the frozen chosen, not just held for the few, but is open to everybody. Everybody. So that's what I usually do with this one. And, but the, as I was studying this text and working through it, I wanted to focus on the second story today. So if I'm back in three years, maybe I'll do the first story for you then. But I probably won't be. So the thing to notice in this story is, where is Jesus? Where is Jesus? He's not in the land of his Jewish ancestors. He's not in his hometown area. He has gone away, far away. A Syrophoenician woman is not the typical people who would be welcomed into the life of Jesus. I mean, it would like be going all the way to Plano and dealing with those people. He was in a land far off where the people are different. And then in, 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 the, in the second part, he returned from the region of Tyre and went by way of Sidon toward the, toward the Sea of Galilee, He's not at the Sea of Galilee. In the region of the Decapolis. Now, the Decapolis, as, 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 as the name suggests, Deca, 10. The, te the, the, the Decapolis is 10 cities in what we would now call Jordan and Syria. They're the eastern front of the Roman Empire. And these are Semitic-speaking people. Semites. 
is, way, is the way to think of this. And Jesus encounters this man who cannot hear and cannot speak. He cannot hear and he cannot speak. And what follows this is a healing miracle. This is, this is one of those times that Jesus heals and it's direct. But this one is, 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 is just so very different. Did, did you notice the hocus pocus in this particular one? It's almost as if it's prescriptive in some way. It's done in secret. Jesus takes the man away. And then he uses his fingers and sticks them in the man's ears. And then we're told that Jesus spits and then touches a tongue. And we don't know if he spat on his hand and then touched. We don't know if the spit got mixed. Don't ask all those questions. It's just too much and there's no prescription to this and it doesn't make any sense to all of us. And then abracadabra, he, 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 he announces an incantation. Ephetha. Ephetha, he says, which means be open. Be open. And immediately, did you catch this? The man's mouth was opened and he could speak and his ears were opened and he could hear. Yes? Be open. And then you have that weird thing where Jesus says, now don't tell anybody about this. Let's keep this between you and, and, and me. But what does the man do? He goes and tells everybody and wouldn't you because you now have a voice and you can hear when you tell this story to everybody they say well I, i'm not sure i believe that and then you say well but it is true be open be open how are you doing on being open in your life it's tricky now isn't it I mean, you, you try and reveal a little bit of yourself uh, online, and da, 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 everybody's back on you there. Or you try and be open about your true nature, about your own self, who you are and how you see the world, and people disagree with you. Some of you might try and be open about being a Republican or being a Democrat, and how does that go? Or you tell people you're a Christian, and they're like, eh, 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 eh. how are we at being open, truly open to receive what the world has to offer to us? But in this case, it is being open to God. It is being open to God. In this story, there were, in, in, in these two stories, there were three characters that were open. Did you notice that? There were three. One was the woman who came to Jesus and said, my daughter is suffering. Please, please, please help me relieve her suffering. Yes? So she was open to whatever would cure her daughter. Please, please help me for my daughter. The second character who was open was Jesus. Jesus was open to receiving this woman. You know, the edicts of his faith say that he was not to deal with women in public. He was certainly not to be seen with women that were not of his faith. Being a good, holy person, he wasn't supposed to interact with women because they might be sullied in some way and might affect his holiness. But no, he opens himself to them and he lets it through. And then you have the blind man. No, he wasn't blind, was he? He was deaf and he was mute. And he was seeking the openness of Jesus' healing in his own life. And I submit to you that he wasn't the only one that was deaf and mute. If you can hear me now, you can hear, but you still may be deaf. And it's often a challenge to speak the truth. And so we make ourselves mute. We encounter someone who is misinformed. Who lets out a prejudice. 
who speaks in a way that does not align with our understanding of the world and our faith, and what do we do? We go mute, and we pretend that we were deaf. Yeah? We don't say to that person, you know, that isn't how I see the world. I have friends who would be hurt by what you just said, and I'm a little offended by it too. And I would invite you to see the world a little differently. Hmm? Or do we remain mute and pretend that we are deaf? It's sometimes tough to be open, isn't it? To say to somebody, mm, I see it differently. You don't have to be angry. You can just be loving and say, no, my God loves everybody. And therefore, I love everybody. Being open. But I left something out of the story as I just retold it. Another party that was open. When, 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 when we read about the, 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 uh, about the deaf and blind man, he returned to the area going toward the Sea of Galilee in the Decapolis. And then in 32, it says, they brought him a deaf man. You see, the crowd was also open. They knew that Jesus had the healing powers, and so they, and it's unspecific who they are, but his friends, the people who wanted to help this man, brought him to the healer. So the crowd was also open to who Jesus was was they brought him a deaf man as well. So we can be that crowd, and when we stand together, we, we witness to the power of hope and its ability to change the world. So the first thing to be open to is healing. Healing in our own lives, from our own fears, from our own deafness, from our own muteness, from our own inability to stand to the world with the faith that we have. Be open to healing. The second to be open is to be open to hope. Do you ever doom scroll? Do you know what doom... <laughs> yeah, I got a witness back here. Um, do you know what doom scrolling is? When you have your tablet or your phone and you're just scrolling for all of the bad news that you can possibly find. You only look for the negative. Oh, he's still president. Huh? Can you believe they said that about her? Look at that dress. Right? Doom scrolling. All of the stuff that's wrong in the world. All the people that are fighting. And that is to lock ourselves in. To close ourselves in to the negative. To the world that isn't out there with the great hope that we have. So be open to hope in your life. G.K. Chesterton says, hope means hoping when things are hopeless. Did you catch that? Hope is only really effective when things are hopeless. When you don't think anything can be done, when the world has gone all the way to the other side, when there is no one who makes any sense to you, when the world is hopeless, that's when hope means something. It means that we will reorient ourselves, that we will be open to new ways of seeing and being. When that woman had this daughter and everything seemed to be in death, she ran to Jesus with hope because her situation was hopeless. Everybody tried to help this, this, this deaf and dumb man and find a way, and finally they were filled with hopelessness, and then they brought the man to Jesus because they again had hope. In one of our cities, there was a program to help hospitalized children keep up with their studies. This often falls away. A child gets sick and they, and, 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 and they don't quite get going with their studies anymore and their studies fall off and they, they lack. So this program hired teachers to go into hospitals and teach children as they're receiving treatment in hospitals. And this teacher was hired to help this small boy. 
And so she went to the boy's classroom teacher and said, what would you like for me to work on with him? And the classroom teacher thought for a moment and said, you know what we really need help with and what's really going to benefit him as he moves forward is nouns and adjectives. If you could work with him on teaching nouns and adjectives, that would be really great and it would really help him go a long way. So the hospital teacher got herself ready and she, she went to see the little boy. And when she got to the hospital, she was guided to the burn unit. And the boy had second and third degree burns over much of his body. He looked mutilated by fire. And the hospital teacher was stunned. She had never seen anything like this before. And it just rattled her. And she got off on a bad start and, and, and just felt terrible. And she went in and, 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 and she tried to do her lesson the best that she possibly could. She really worked with the boy, but it just didn't go well. And she, as she left, she felt just terrible that she had let this boy down and that she had let herself be so shocked. But the next day dawned, and she got herself steadied, and she went in to teach the boy again. And as she was walking to the boy's room, the nurse ran up to her, and said, what did you do yesterday? What did you do? And the, and the woman felt that she was going to have to defend herself because she thought it was just, uh, it went so poorly and that she had done something wrong. And she started to apologize and the certain nurse said, no, 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 no. What did you do yesterday? It was magnificent. Suddenly the boy perked up and now he has more verm and, 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 and life and he's ready to keep going. What did you do? And she said, I, I did the best I could. I went in and talked, told taught him about nouns and adjectives. So the nurse and the teacher went in and said, um, what did you experience yesterday when the teacher came? And the little boy looked at him and smiled his best smile. And through his pain, he said, you know, it was really great. I know that I'm now going to live because they wouldn't send a teacher to teach me about nouns and adjectives if I wasn't going to live. even when it all seems hopeless. Small things make big differences and they heal in new and magnificent ways. So friends, where in your life, where in your life do you desire to be more open? To be more trusting of God in the miracle of the world? Where do you desire to be more open? Do you desire to be more daring? To try something new? Do you desire to heal a family wound? Do you desire to speak the truth? Do you desire to be daring? Do you need to be more open and have courage to reach out to the hurting and homeless with the hurting and homelessness in your own life? Do you need to go back to school and relearn and start over again? Do you need to break boundaries that have held you in for so long? Here's the wonder of it. God is present with us. With us, God is present, inviting us to be more open. Thanks be to God.
We are ever grateful for the ways that you support the ministries of Yorkville Congregational United Church of Christ and for the many ways that you share generously with what God has generously shared with you. So whether you are at home or here, we are thankful for that. You can give online or you can make an offering in the offering box in the back. We are grateful and hope that you will share in that way. We also love to tell you about the things that happen as we, as we share so generously. And uh, I'm going to move over here so Diane doesn't get mad at me. Um, and then tell you about a tremendous ministry. Hurricane Ida came through, right? You're all aware of that. And it first came in uh, on the Gulf Coast and then in Louisiana, right? And then it hooked up and then went all the way into Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and New York and wreaked havoc all, all, all along the way. The United Church of Christ, through their disaster ministries, um, had placed already people in the Gulf Coast and, and started to process that and to move in cleanup kits and buckets and powers. And I've been part of teams that have gone with the United Church of Christ uh, to, to make these kinds of differences. And you show up with buckets and you clean and you bring people hope and you offer them whatever comes their way. This storm happened to arrive 16 years after Hurricane Katrina slammed the area, causing 1,800 people dead. Far fewer have died. Have you noticed that? We've learned a little bit, and it's really great. Reverend Phil Hodson, um, who is the South Central Conference minister, checked with all of his churches, and all of his pastors seemed to be in pretty good shape. But he ran into a further challenge when he um, started to look for one of his congregations that is not in great shape shape, and that is Little Farms UCC in Louisiana. The roof was blown far away from their church, and they had to close their building and, uh, and, and, and had to cancel all of their programming, and they're trying to figure out how to do worship and make a part of it. But the roof actually just blew right off of the building. That, the, the roof that you see, that, the part that's torn off, but also that other part, there used to be a roof there, too that blew away and it flooded their classrooms and it, uh, and, and it really made it tough for them to, uh, to hold any kind of help and hope in their congregation. Yet they are a hopeful people and they continue to, uh, to act and to do well as best they can with this severe storm. So we please keep, um, keep uh, Little Farms UCC, which is in Louisiana, in your prayers. Keep the churches in Pennsylvania and New York and New Jersey in your prayers because they too will be affected by this. But also, if you would like to make a, a contribution through the UCC Severe Storms 2021 Fund to help these churches mend and heal and the work groups come and help them as well. Thanks be to God for the way that you give in so many ways to bless so many. Will you join with us in the prayer of dedication of selves and gifts? Generous God, take our gifts this day and use them so that they, we may be part of your great work in this world. Through our giving, bring justice and love closer to all, not just in our community, but in the world beyond these walls. Strengthen our church into a powerful voice for healing and peace. Amen. As we prepare for communion, will you join to sing?
If you are a guest with us, please know that this table is open to all. All are welcome, whether you're a member of this church or of no church, whether you are a Christian or not. You are welcome here to taste and see that the Lord is good. This table is open to all who wish to know the presence of the Christ symbolized in this humble act of sharing. Come not because you must, but because you may. It is spread for you and for me that we might know that God has come to us, shared our common lot, and invites us to be God's people in Christ. No matter what your race, your creed, your gender, your orientation, all are welcome here. This is the table of grace. Come to this table just as you are. The cup is never empty and the plate is always full. The sustaining elements of bread and wine reveal God's unfailing provision for us in body and in spirit. Today, as we share God's feast, let us remember that Jesus' gracious power is at work today in the world, in the bread and the wine, and in our community. This is the joyful feast of, for the people of God, men and women, youth and children, Come from the east and the west and the north and the south and gather around Christ's table. Partake and be made whole. Come, Holy Spirit, come bless this bread and bless this fruit of the vine that in our eating and drinking and sharing of it we may witness your resurrected presence. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Loving God, we take these communion elements made from grain and grapes, and set them aside for this holy purpose, consecrated by you and confirmed by the faith in our hearts. Amen. On the night in which he was betrayed, Jesus took bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in a similar manner, after the supper, he took the cup, and after giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and drink. This is my blood shed for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The body of Christ. Take and eat. The cup of blessing. Take and drink. so blessed to see us learn together as we commune together. Will you join, will you rise as you are able and join with me in the prayer of thanksgiving. God, we thank you for inviting us to this table where we have known the presence of the living Christ and have received all Christ's gifts. Strengthen our faith and increase our love for one another. Go with us to the streets, to our homes, and to our places of work and play, so we may carry your amazing grace and the light of Christ's love into the world. In his name we pray. Amen. Shall we join together in worship one more time? Many of you will know it, at least some, of the um, song, Lift Your Voice and Let's Worship. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found, was blind, but now was grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relieved how precious did that 
disappear the hour I first believed my chains are long as life as long as life can do my chains are gone Chains are gone, I've been set free. My God, my Savior has ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy reigns. Unending love, amazing grace. Will you join with me in the singing of the Alleluia? May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May God look upon you with kindness and give you peace.